Okay, everybody, let's do this. The fourth and final video. We're gonna get through this. It's the other one cut off because my iPhone storage was full. It's ridiculous. And I didn't want to deprive you of the pure gold that is the video of my cats. So we we're talking about the cultural model and then the charity model, the last two. And um, cultural model is different, according to Retief and Lasosa, from the medical and social models, in that quote, the medical model and the social model each focus on only one factor in their approach to disability that is either bodily impairment or social barriers while quote the cultural model focuses on a range of cultural factors unquote these factors they continue quote may include medical and social factors but <clears throat> are by no means limited to these factors Cultural factors can also include economics, politics, aesthetics, um, which is basically the study of beauty, uh, ethics, music, architecture, and social institutions like media, education, religion, and government. All of these different things um, work together to constitute what disability is and what disability means. The cultural model is a more holistic way of understanding disability as constituted, constituted by the intermingling factors in one's environment, not just social or medical factors. Finally, the charity model of understanding disability is one that's regarded most negatively by people with disabilities themselves. It's similar to the medical model in that disability is regarded as a personal tragedy in need of amelioration. But while the medical model prescribes therapy and medication, the charity model prescribes charitable donations from non-disabled people as the remedy for disabled people's ills. Clearly, this model can give rise to a savior complex in people without disabilities. And people with disabilities themselves often find this model insulting. The charity model understands disabled people as victims of circumstance who should be pitied since their suffering is tragic and also as um, helpless, depressed, and dependent on other people for care and protection. This model obscures the creative agency of disabled people in working towards their own good and in fact towards the common good. It identifies disabled people as tragic, passive victims who must be supported by the ever-flowing generosity of the non-disabled. Theologies that adopt this model emphasize the responsibility of non-disabled people to take care of people with disabilities, while failing to note the meaningful agency that disabled people themselves can exercise in making the world a more hospitable place for them and for everybody. The charity model is admirable in that it endeavors after the good of disabled people. Sure, that's great. Yet, it falls short in placing responsibility for the good of people with disabilities in non-disabled people's hands alone. And this goes back to the very beginning of the semester when we read Leonardo Boff and he said, charity is not enough. Giving stuff to the poor is not enough. Development is also not enough. Giving stuff to poor countries is not enough. Because what's not happening there is that the poor are not being empowered and enabled 